mtazamaji huu jambo fote pale ulipo ni matumaini yangu kwamba Jumapili ya leo inakuendea shwari karibu kwa taarifa za mbiu wikendi jina langu ni Mary Kilobi Mzozo wa kinyumbani wasababisha kifo cha mtoto mmoja na mamake kujeruhiwa huko Rongo. Wakaanza kupiga risasi kwa usaz wetu lakini usaz wetu akaka response na akaangusha wote wanne. Watatu mmoja akatoroka. Washukuru watatu wa ujambazi wa wao kwa kupigwa risasi na polisi katika eneo la Kimilili kaunti ya Bungoma. Speaker wa bunge Justin Muturi ataka maelezo kuhusu madai ya wabunge kupokea hongo ili kuvuruga ripoti ya sukari bungeni. Na katika mseto wa taarifa za Tanzania wanahabari wana hofu ya kushambuliwa wakati wanapoendelea na shughuli zao. Na mtazamaji karibu kwa taarifa kamili jina langu ni Mary Kilobi. Wanafunzi saba kati ya kumi na mmoja wa shule ya msingi ya Gabriels waliofia katika ajali ya barabarani wiki iliyopita walizikwa hapo jana. Katika uh, wanafunzi hao walifariki katika eneo la Kangiga huko Mwingi wakati basi lao lilipogongana na lori. Akizungumza katika kijiji cha Kairungu wakati wa mazishi yao mbunge wa Mwingi Magharibi Charles Nguna amesema kwamba atazungumza na waziri wa uchukuzi James Masharia kwa kisha kwamba wanakandarasi wanarakisha ujenzi wa barabara kuu ya Mwingi Garissa. Ah, kenda kwa sia andomangai, tukaa neno tukivula ya mtu mwisho. Sina wema wa kutosha. Dhambi zangu kuziosha kwake Yesu nasimama. We accept the work which is being done there by the central government should and I've already taken actions as an area member of parliament and I'm sure the Minister of Transport is going to correct whatever they are doing there to make sure all the roads are done up to the standards which are acceptable. As drivers, we have also to be on lookout of other passengers or other drivers. I'm sure we are going to help all the blame na basi mtazamaji tuangazie taarifa ya kitanzia kutoka eneo la Rongo ambapo mzozo wa kinyumbani umesababisha mama mmoja kujaribu kujiua kwa kujiteketeza na wanawe watatu mmoja wao alifariki wengine wawili wakipata majeraha sawa na yeye aliyefariki alikuwa mtoto wa miaka sita Emily Anyango Otieno mwenye umri wa miaka sita na ambaye ni mke wa naibu chifu alijifungia ndani ya nyumba na watoto hao kabla ya kutia ama kuwasha moto nyumba hiyo akidai kwamba amepitia hali ngumu ndani ya ndoa yake kulingana na jirani yake Emily alikuwa amelalamikia hatua ya mumewe kwa mke wa pili matibabu ama wanamshughulikia wakisema kwamba hali ya wagonjwa hao haimo hatarini so far as i speak now there's a lot of improvement she can talk very nicely. Yesterday she was not talking the way she's talking now. So the message, I hope with the medicine that she's on, she will recover very fast. We are interviewing her and she's saying she never shared. A problem shared is a halfway solved. So if she would have shared this, her problems with somebody, despite she's parentless, she would have ended somewhere. And the most important thing is she should seek to her God. Because God is the superior over everything. Na mtazamaji moja kwa moja nitakupeleka katika kaunti ya Kisii ambapo kuna sherehe za kuadhimisha siku ya kimataifa ya vijana ambapo Rais Uhuru Kenyatta amehudhuria sherehe hiyo na basi nikupeleke huko Rais Uhuru Kenyatta anapozungumza tuweze kusikiza ni mazuri yapi ambayo amewabebea vijana wa huko nchini. Who have worked tirelessly to empower and to prosper our sons and daughters. We owe it to you the celebration we owe to you the celebration we have today. Ladies and gentlemen, as today we join the rest of the world in celebrating the young people. We should also use this occasion to reflect on the next steps in walking this journey 
of empowering the youth. There is indeed real pleasure in recognizing how far we have come, but we equally need to think about the challenges that are before us, and more importantly, what we need to do to overcome these challenges. Let's begin as we should by thinking about the opportunity. Three in every four Kenyans are below the age of 35, and these are enlightened, result-focused, energetic, innovative, and patriotic Kenyans. It is up to us, as your elders, therefore, not only to teach you, but to create opportunities that direct that energy in order to make you full partners in the development of our great nation. It is our desire, and mine in particular, to leave for you a richer, freer, more united, and more stable nation of Kenya. In furtherance of this mission, what remains is to clear all the obstacles in your path. Notably, lack of appropriate vocational and technical skills, financial capital, and opportunities. We have, set up, we have as an administration, have set ourselves an agenda to resolve these challenges. We are all aware that we have established free primary and secondary education. In addition, educational loans, which initially were extended only to university students, are now available to students in technical, vocational, educational training, activities. And we have dedicated funds for students joining technical training institutions to ensure that no Kenyan youth fails to join and complete their courses for lack of school fees. Na mtazamaji ni mkutano wa kimataifa wa vijana ambao unaendelea huko Kisi na ni Rais Uhuru Kenyatta ambaye anahutubia waliohudhuria mkutano huo. Na tukiendelea na taarifa zetu polisi huko Kimilili katika kaunti ya Bungoma wamewaua kwa kupiga risasi washukiwa ujambazi ambao walipatikana na bunduki ya AK47 na risasi ya msini. Mshukio mwingine alifaulu kutoweka. Washukiwa hao walikuwa wakisafiri katika kwenye pikipiki lakini wakakutana na polisi majira ya saa nne jana usiku. Silaha zilizopatikana zitaletwa mjini Nairobi kwa ajili ya uchunguzi zaidi. Kambasi, ambao ame kuwa ki terrorize wanenchi hapa kimilili na area zetu za ngoma kwa alikuwa njiani kwenda kufanya robbery mahali so wakawekewa waka ambush walikuwa wa, wa, kwa pikipiki mbili wote walikuwa wamepepa watu wawili wawili so walikuwa ambiwa wasimame wakakataa wakaanza kupiga risasi kwa officers wetu lakini officers wetu aka response na akamngusha wote wanne watatu wa mmoja akatoroka Sambao tu pato tunafuatilia tujue ni nani huyo. Walipatikana na AK47 ambayo iko mbele yangu hapa na Marcus Msimbili na risasi 53 life na zingine cartridge zine na nyundo ambao walienda wanaenda kuongea mahali pale wanaenda kufanyia hiyo sarakazi zao. Na kundi moja la wanaharakati wanaojihusisha na utunzi wa mazingira na haki za jamii sasa linadai kwamba ripoti iliyotolewa hivi majuzi kuhusu chanzo cha vifo vya vifaru waliokuwa wakisafirishwa kutoka Nairobi hadi Mbuga ya Savo ilikusudia kuharibia jina madaktari wa mifugo nchini. Kundi hilo kwa jina Kenyans for KWS sasa linasema ni lazima shirika la KWS lipewe fedha za kutosha ili kuboresha utendakazi wake.
Kung lewa sa buhay. Tira niyangu ya napakakana na, na boros. Aka niyambia, iyo limboka yako yung may answer tela ko piyaka. Nikasiyangka, sasa hii, hii nikasakani. Sasa hii yung kwa school bus, ya watoto, na sasa mamalisa. Sasa... Local expertise and capacity in KWS is undermined by the lack of financial resources, disingenuous leadership, and the infiltration of its board by foreigners and their lackeys locally, like Craig and Zeitz, with clearly vested interests. In the so-called investigations into the recent Rhino translocation fiasco, neither Kenyan vets nor their professional association were involved in this, but instead a South African vet under the auspices of the Worldwide Fund for Nature, WWF, was consulted in the resulting probe. The Director of Veterinary Services no longer sits on the KWS Board of Trustees, as was the case some years ago. And we ask why. Yet the immediate casualties of the alleged probe to whom culpability was so questionably laid were the local vets, who are highly qualified in their fields, are very experienced and long overworked while under the employ of KWS. Na kwa kawaida huwa ni furaha kwa kila jamii mama mjamzito anapojifungua lakini kwa jamii moja mtaani Dandora hapa Nairobi raha imegeuka na kuwa karaha wakati wa Millicent Aviambo kujifungua alijifungua watoto wane na kutokana na hali yao duni mtoto mmoja akafariki mwanabari wetu Mary Mooki alizungumza naye na kuandaa taarifa ifuatayo Hapo pia tulishukuru juu sisi hatujui hatujai shalisha mama hatujui sasa vile mfuko ali, ilitoka hivi tukamweka akae chini. Vile alikaa damu ilimwagika mingi akatupa fahamu nguvu iliisha. Ni simulizi yake Anne Nyatuka ambaye ni jirani wa familia ya Sylvester Opondo. Anakumbuka fika matukio ya jioni hiyo wiki sita zilizopita alipolazimika kuwa mkunga. Ni sauti ya pata hawa watatu wakilia. Kilio chao ni ujumbe kwa mama yao kuwa wanahitaji chakula. Mamao Millicent Adiambo ana wakazi ya macho tu. Hana uwezo wa kuwanyonyesha wanawe japo wana wiki sita tu. From when she gave birth, she delivered Mama Lucy. They found that she had few complications. But as a nutritionist, we recommend exclusive breastfeeding. But due now to the complications, now she cannot be able to breastfeed. Adhiambo mwenye umri wa miaka 30 sasa ni mama watoto wa nane. Anasema japo angeliweza angewanyonyesha wanawe kama inavyostahili, analazimika kuwapa maziwa ya ngombe. Wanakunywa maziwa sana. Hii wanaweza maliza nayo hiyo moja au wote watatu. Wanamaliza nayo 2 days. Anasikitika kuwa kufikia sasa wanawe hawajapata huduma za matibabu inavyofaa kwani alipowapeleka hospitali alilazimika kurudi nao nyumbani kwani hakuwa na fedha za kutosha kulipia vipimo vilivyohitajika. Sama malusi kuwarudisha ndio hawakupimwa sasa. Juu ya vile tuli, tulienda wakatuambia tumechelewa. Sasa baba yao akasema basi wapimwe basi tume, wapimwe wait ndio turudi nyumbani si tukua tunajua kuna pesa tunafaa tutoe sasa hapo kwa wait huyu alikuwa anapima wait akasema hizi kawapima kama kuna mia tatu. sasa hawakupimwa tulirudi tu umewe silvester opondo mwenye umri wa miaka hamsini na tano, analazimika kwenda takriban kilomita ishirini kuwataftia wanawe maziwa na hata hivyo maziwa anayopewa mara nyingi hayatoshi hivyo basi analazimika kuwapa maziwa ya ngombe japokuwa pacha hawa wana wiki sita tu sasa wiki mbili walipatia mimi maziwa ngapi kwa mtoto moja moja. Haifiki kwa wa mama wanakamu wana, wana nini? Wanafuga ngombe hapa area hiyo. Sasa mimi naenda kaza ile wanakamu mimi nasimama hapa. Hapa na nini ona ona wakanini wakanapimia mimi kama iko bado moto si ndio? Kazaza na kuja hapa na chamusa. Opondo sasa anasema kuwa amefanya kila wezalo na mzigo wa kuelea watoto kumi unamlemea. Nikiona dalili Sindio? Mbele, hapa mbele. Sindio? Itakuwa na siwezi afford hawa hata. Sasa ile watafika sasa sasa ile saa nyingine wanaweza nini? Ende tu. Mary Mwoki, KTN News.
Na mtazamaji nchini Tanzania upinzani umeanza kupata pigo baada ya baadhi ya wanasiasa wa mrengo huo kuhamia chama tawala cha CCM. Rajab Hassan anaangazia swala hilo. Ni jambo ambalo walikutazamiwa na wengi kwa kiongozi kama Julius Mtatiro kujivua wanachama wa chama chake cha wananchi CUF na kujiunga na chama tawala CCM. Inafahamika Julius Mtatiro amekuwa mpinzani ambaye alisema kila lile ambalo aliliona halifai lililofanywa chama tawala CCM. Julius Mtatiro mbele ya wanahabari katika mkutano aliowaandaa ameeleza wazi nia yake ya kujiunga na chama cha mapinduzi CCM. Kwa kuanzia hivi sasa na kwenda mbele naanza kushiriki kikamilifu kutumia vipaji vyangu vyote vya uongozi kuisaidia nchi yangu serikali yangu wa Tanzania na watu wote wenye nia njema na nimejiridhisha kwamba wa Tanzania wana matatizo mengi mengi na yanahitaji watatuzi lakini pia nikazingatia kwamba baadhi ya watatuzi muhimu wa matatizo hayo Watu wenye vipawa na uwezo nikiwemo mimi binafsi hawana majukwaa mwafaka ya kufanya hiyo kazi. Julius Mtatiro ni kiongozi ndani ya chama cha wananchi CUF na kujivua kwake wanachama kumeibua hisia. Iwapo Tanzania nchi inayoamini katika demokrasia ina wapinzani wa kweli amala. Rajabu Hassan KT News Dar es Salaam. Na mtazamaji tukisalia nchini Tanzania wanahabari wanafanya kazi zao kwa hofu ambapo katika kipindi cha miezi miwili wanahabari watano wameingia katika mgogoro na polisi wa nchi hiyo lakini kisa cha hivi karibuni cha wanahabari kupigwa na maafisa wa jeshi la polisi la nchi hiyo kimezua gumzo na watetezi wa haki za binadamu wanataka mamlaka hiyo kuheshimu haki za binadamu wanahabari wetu Rajab Hassan ana maelezo zaidi kutoka jijini Dar es Salaam nchini Tanzania Mwanahabari nchini Tanzania sasa ni miongoni mwa wafanyakazi wanaoishi kwa hofu. Kalamu na kamera zao huonekana kama nchi ya bunduki mbele ya wanaofanya harakati zao gizani. Lakini si wanaofanya tu mambo yao kwa siri. Hata walinda usalama wameonekana kutumia nguvu zaidi dhidi ya mwanahabari mwenye kalamu tu. Hii ni video iliyorekodiwa Agosti 8 mwaka huu. Anayesulubiwa ni mwanahabari Sila Simbise wa kituo cha redio cha Wapo FM cha jijini hapa. Walipisha na maneno alipozuiliwa kuingia chumba cha mkutano baada ya kumalizika kwa mchezo wa mpira wa miguu baina ya Simba Sports Club na Asante Kotoko ya Ghana. Mtandao wa watetezi wa haki za binadamu nchini unalaani vikali tukio la kupigwa mwanahabari Sila Simbise. Katika video uliyosambaa wote mliona tukio hilo lilikuwa lina jionyesha akiwa katika uwanja wa taifa ni la kudhalilisha na la kufanya waandishi wa habari wazidi kuwa waoga wanapokuwa katika kazi zao Tukio jingine lililotokea katika siku hiyo hiyo ni mwandishi wa, 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 wa gazeti la Tanzania Daima ndugu sita tuma naye alipigwa na kukamatwa na maafisa wa polisi siku hiyo hiyo tarehe 8 Agosti 2018 ndugu tuma alikamatwa alipokuwa akichukua habari katika mkutano wa kampeni za uchaguzi mdogo wa diwani huko Karime. Kwa mujibu wa mtandao huu, matukio ya ukiukwaji wa haki za binadamu kwa wanahabari yamekithiri hapa nchini. Katika kipindi cha miezi miwili tu, hadi sasa wanahabari watano wamekumbana na nguvu ya askari polisi. Hivyo ni muda mwafaka Tanzania kuchukua hatua zaidi. Nitafahamu kwamba Tanzania sio eh, mwanachama wa huu mkataba ambao unazuia utesaji na vitendo ambavyo vinakiuka eh, vinavyotweza utu wa binadamu. Kwa hiyo tunaomba serikali sasa imefikia hatua ifikie wakati sasa waweze kusaini huu mkataba na kutengenezea sheria ili vitendo vyote ambavyo uh, vinakiuka haki za binadamu eh, kutesa watu pamoja na kutweza utu wa binadamu eh, viweze kuwa eh, kwenye kwenye sheria sasa. Tukio la kupigwa kwa mwanahabari Sila Simbise Hivi sasa lipo katika ngazi ya uchunguzi chini ya jeshi la polisi Tanzania. Na mtandao wa watetezi wa haki za binadamu Tanzania unasisitiza jeshi la polisi na mamlaka zote nchini kutii haki za binadamu na kuheshimu wanahabari ambao ni kundi muhimu kwa ustawi wa Tanzania. Rajab Hassan, KT News, Dar es Salaam. Hmm.
na lingumu hiyo ni makosa sana kuweza kuadhulumu wanahabari na mtazamaji tunapata mapumziko mafupi na kisha tutarejea na marudio ya makala yako wapi ambapo tutakuletea mazungumzo mahojiano kati yangu na kaka Jos ambaye ni Jack Oyo Silvestre tutarejea mwendo wa saa moja na taarifa za kete leo weekend ikiwa ni siku ya Jumapili tutakuwa na nusu ya jinsia Bifauzia Kifimbo atakuwa kwenye studio mimi ni Mary Kilobi tukutane saa moja